Um, thank you, Paul. And it was great to hear some of the things that um, Tobias was saying. And I completely agree with that. As a child of conflict myself and also a survivor of um, FGM, I understand how both of those two things really do um how to contribute to the concept of poverty one of the key things is that um so i i that the the five foundation which is the global partnership on ending fgm doesn't necessarily focus on the traditional um aid element of um trying to teach people that fgm is bad but it actually teaches on the fact of economic justice and economic independence within these countries every um, single country that is in conflict at the moment has some of the highest forms of violence against women and girls so if we look at afghanistan syria most of the african continent where fgm is more than 40 percent every single one of those countries is in um is in conflict at the moment and that's because gender violence and gender-based violence is actually at the root of creating instability within those countries and where there's instability and where 50 percent of your economic um power which is women are either maimed um, dying at birth or marrying as children, then you will be in, in, in poverty. So one of the things that I really want to say is that I do agree 100% with what um, with with what, what what Tobias says that the UK has a massive role to play, and as we look towards being the president of the G7, I think we need to be putting gender gender equality at the heart of it. No offense to a lot of people that will throw away and um, will throw around the title um, girls' education. It's actually a fallacy that girls' education can actually happen when conflict and safety and security is not there. So we're looking at places like Afghanistan, where I've seen um, eight-year-old girls being ripped to the hands of their mums and being sold into sexual slavitude, which is called early forced marriage. And then we come back with girls' education. We can't educate girls when women are not free. And when women are not free, it's ultimately about economic power. So um, there is an opportunity within COVID in order to take stock. And there is an opportunity in order to start doing things differently. And we as the United Kingdom, as a permanent member of the Security Council, as one of the G7 countries have the opportunity to do that. I think the only other uh, kind of G7 leader that has spoken eloquently about the need to invest in Africa, which I'm massively interested in, is um, 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 the French president who actually really understands that the, that, that, that the African continent needs three things. It needs employment, it needs education, it needs sanitation, and those things have to come from investment. Um, and coming back to how the Five Foundation came about, I've been in this space of um, ending FGM for the last 10 years and trying to frame it as a form of violence against women and girls. But in 2018, I was sitting in New York when the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation had an event and they were talking about poverty in sub-Saharan Africa. And this term poverty was just being thrown around and there were stats on where poverty was either going to double or triple in the next decade. Every single place where poverty was going to go up had more than 40% of, F of, of FGM. Every place where poverty was going to double or triple had more than a 40% or a universal uptake of child marriage, which is when girls are married at, um, over, um, under the age of um, 18. And without even a hesitation and without ironic um, standpoints, the next person that the Gates Foundation brought over was the president of Sierra Leone asking for investment in his country. That is a country that has an 87% uptake of FGM. For every dollar you put into investment, you, you probably have to spend another 20 in order to stabilize um, the um, education, the kind of the welfare of those things. So we as a Western society are not really looking at the real value of Africa's women. Which, I, so, which is one of the things that I really want to, to come out of this. And one of the things that I really hope that we look at as our, um, as our G7 and um, 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 presidency um, starts. COVID might have numbers of infection that we talk about with this side of the world. But for me, what is really stark is the fact that a million girls will be added to the global statistics of FGM. That's a million and adolescent girls who will also be sold in this sexual slavitude, who will also have children. And there is a projection that Africa's population within the next decade is going to be 2.3 billion. The continent cannot sustain that. Many of those children are going to be born to young adolescent girls with no education, no economic employment and no access to sanitation. So, of course, more instability and more war is just going to be created. And that is going to be to our detriment. So Africa's future actually rests on us. But without it's not within the context of the aid industry that we need to be looking at. 
but it's really looking at how do we invest in Africa as an economic superpower, because it is an economic superpower. And the only people that are investing in Africa at the moment or have any interest in Africa at the moment are China and Turkey. And I can tell you as a woman um, and as a feminist, there are two things that China and Turkey do not care about, and that's human rights and women's rights. So if we don't think differently, if we don't start seeing Africa as an opportunity, if we as the United Kingdom do not actually see that we have the opportunity to talk about um, human rights, women's rights, the rule of law, and sell that to a young population on the continent of Africa who, who really want that, then I don't necessarily think that the next um, decade is it's gonna be something that we can celebrate. And I think that might even come sooner with, um, with the uprising that's happening in Nigeria at the moment, with news that um, Al-Shabaab actually taking more revenue than the Somali government. I think um, Africa's um, downfall is very, very much at our doorsteps. And it's, and it's gonna be our disadvantage if we don't tackle that.